my opinions on this chapter honestly shifted in between uh, this morning um, to about a minute ago. Like it, I just finished the chapter, and I wanted to really get on this because I I thought it it gave me a honestly this, a uniqueness of how I just received a chapter of fairy tale like so quickly shifted and it's not even like one that it's like okay i look back and I actually like this part better like i very heavily shifted because when i i woke up this morning and i i woke up like i set an alarm for like two minutes before the chapter comes out so i can uh, you know get it as soon as possible figure out the spoilers and uh well rods because i buy the old chapters not just little hinted spoilers anyway um i i got to the chapter and i was kind of indifferent because we know uh, that the god, the god seeds are clearly formidable. They've got some good powers. We don't know the full extent. And I I made my last uh, theory video. It was um it was a, the idea of that the white witch actually is the one to fight uh to fight uh oh my god doom I spaced out his name for a second which is weird because he's the one that I was like hey he's the easiest name to remember but um I thought it was gonna be her versus doom and we'll like see some of uh. Some of like the white witch's powers maybe get her name or something just that would have the ability to kind of just in general give us some more information on her but uh guess not it, not a big deal like it not always gonna get every call right and you know, like wendy was in a bad spot because carla was covered in doom spores and i did really like so this is something i did like because there, there's a there's a little like slight confusion when it came to merce phobia because with the dragons, dragons don't have to use magic. They can use magic. They aren't relying on it. And so, like, him talking about not having magic in his body is a little bit weird. But we haven't really had anything for magic on Alderaan, and there's no confirmation that Doom's power is a magic ability. It's just an ability. It's a dragon ability. Where and he's got these spores that suck out your life force, or your life force, and after five minutes, it just kills you. And it's not... It's interesting. It's a, like a type of fate manipulation and not a type of, um, uh, and, and not like a status effect. That's the more interesting, I think, uh, more interesting thing about that power that I, I, I find that just to kind of like think about. Because it's broken as hell and it, it fits. I mean, it's right on the, to Alderaan, I mean, big boy dragon god. But and not only that, because it's, it, if you're 1v1, you're kind of screwed on it unless you have specific types of attacks. But uh, Wendy's like thinking about what she's gonna do next. She's uh, she's only got a couple minutes until the last petal falls on Carla and she dies. She's like okay, you know, I, I can't. I have enough magic to do some enchants, but I can't fight myself. Uh, you know, she's like thinks about enchanting Happy. Uh, it wouldn't really go anywhere. I mean, Happy's not a fighter. I mean, he, I've mentioned earlier in a different video that I'm prepping up. Um, he's fast, but he's just not really much of a fighter. And, uh, you know, think about, like, Irene, was like, oh, no, she, you know, she went back to sleep in her head. Oh, she also doesn't have any magic lift. She can't do anything there. And Doom just starts, like, busting out attacks. And this, I do like. This I do really like. Because it's just in the idea, not in, um, oh, he's using an attack. When you have a character that you're going to, like, uh, get rid of really fast. I mean, uh, Doom, one chapter. That's still fine. He's still got a chapter. He didn't get, he wasn't just kind of, like, brought up and defeated. Like, oh, so many Spriggan, uh, Spriggan minions. Oh, poor Nineheart Screw. I'm just remembering. I'm just, it, none of, I don't even think any of them got names. That's the sadder part. Actually, no, I think a few of them got names. I think they walked up and said their name. I had to go back and look. But those dudes who just were beaten in one panel, that's like the same page that they showed up. That stuff. But Doom, uh, is busting out in attacks. And it's like, if you don't plan for this character to go long enough to, like, have a display over time, just start busting out moves. Like, it, it just give a little display of them. And that's what he got. He, I think he did three named, uh, named techniques. He did the spore snow, where it's pretty much just a big uh, area of effect. He's gonna have like spores just kind of raining down that are gonna coat onto people, and uh, they do their thing. It's not, it's not magic. It's like a fate manipulation. It'll like suck out their life force. And when it gets on you, it'll just continuously grow. Even if you pull some off, it'll just keep growing. And uh, and it, it, it's really dangerous, I imagine, because it. It, and obviously ability but like in the idea of like a character fighting alderaan and specifically just getting this one unless you're in a group this is a like way more dangerous of a power because if you get just kind of covered in it, you're kind of screwed unless you can take out uh doom within the, like the span of time it's probably going to take just to completely coat your body doom's dancing around he's having fun and then uh in comes max which again it was like i saw the attack hit 
And then I was like standing there, I was like, okay, who is this? But I saw the back of Max's head, and obviously it's not in color, so I couldn't see. So I thought, oh, I'm white. I was like, oh, well, maybe, maybe like, uh, Lizana or Mira Jane, or for some reason, somebody's coming over here. I, I don't know, or maybe a new character. Could have, it could have been like a, uh, a original member of Rebellious coming to help the White Witch. But, uh, nope, it's Max and uh, a bunch of the members of, uh, bunch of different members of the fairy tale guild that somehow i know all their names i mean and max is i think one of the easier ones to remember because he's had a code couple parts same thing with uh with warren digits are i don't expect it relative he's like low on the totem pole of remembering names um Redis, i'd say I, that most uh fans could uh know his name lackey's kind of like that middle ground um inana i would be surprised that uh, if most of the fan base knows who she is because you only get an if unless you watch the anime. I actually really clarify that. I'm talking about just manga goers, uh, or just any casual guys, because the anime makes it way more like part of uh part of the story at one point. But if you don't watch the anime and you just read the manga, you might have missed it. It's once she joins the guild that she gets just gets a guild card, and then she's not even she's not like oh yeah I am in this chapter. She's just in the background, and she's like a. Kind of like a dopey looking uh chubby girl in like overalls i'm pretty sure her original design was and then in the time skip you see her in the background more but it was actually explained on her guild card so if you didn't read that guild card you don't know who she is she was cubelius that was uh cobra's uh snake that he rode and, and like i said if, if you watch the anime they did a little extra in the anime in uh the the starry sky arc where um where like she was like sensing him and uh, like would go to him at one point and then she's mentioned uh that she's dating somebody i think at the end of uh alvarez it was i think she had like a comment about it and then obviously that would be cobra well eric as his role but you have a bunch of guys show up that aren't uh aren't really known in the guild i don't think any of them except for max has had any form of fight in uh in the manga like for real like rita's tried against freed Nab had like a panel. Lackey had like a panel. Uh, the, this was, I think, the first time we really actually see uh, Kinana fight. I, I, I vaguely remember like a short scene in the anime, but really, this is the first time I think we've at least got a name technique from her. Um, Vigitor isn't, uh, he's not a combat type of character, so it uh, doesn't surprise we've ever seen him. And yeah, uh, Max had like the short skirmish against Natsu, like right after the, uh, the, the first time skip. But that's about it. Like, none of them did anything. I actually, out of all of them, I was bummed that Max didn't have uh, some input in in the, within the Alvarez arc because Aja was the first one, really, that they fought uh, from the Spriggan 12. And Max and him both use sand magic. There's Because it's there's nothing really crazy about, um, about Aja's magic. Because, like, when you really... If you read off all of the... Like, if you just had, a, like, a, a like a little display, and you had, like, a picture of each of the Spriggan, it said their name and what their magic was. Like, Ajio would be the least... He's He's got the least uh, kind of, like, standout name and really kind of, like, special one. It's like Demarius, like, you'd see take, take over God Soul, Kronos, being able to stop time and, like, mess with people's bodies and shit. Uh, you know, you got... You have Dem uh, Brandish. You have, like, mass manipulation. Uh, you know, you have... Uh, Jacob, who can both stealth and pocket dimension, like, make himself completely untraceable and pocket dimension people. All of them have really impressive buys, except Agios would just say, sand magic. Because the thing that makes, the, the thing that really makes his magic really good is obviously, like, he's got the dehydration power, but I think sand world in general makes him a massive threat. Like, that was, like, the cool thing for him that I still think is a, a really good ability, because he's got, like, a 10-mile-wide sandstorm that he can pretty much just instantly appear in at any spot within it as the sand. And then uh, he's also like applying massive status effects on his opponents. They can't see, they can't really hear, like they're constantly being like scraped with sand. Uh, they can't even really breathe without getting sand like in their body. It's a really devastating ability when you think about it. It's just weird because it, it can't really compete with like a lot of the others, Brigand. I mean, his, he's still got some really good, like, abilities. Like, he could drain, the, you know, he could dehydrate somebody. Obviously, his is not that fast. It's not like Crocodile over One Piece. Like, he's he can do it, but it doesn't. it's not, like, super crazy. But he, it's weird because he can 
it like straight water and like uh like ice he can just drain instantly but uh, i guess it's probably like a rule between those uh inanimate objects and um actual people maybe for his magic but he he never really did anything uh for that fight and i, and I rambled on about agio for a second uh just because i he's like one of those spriggan that i like but i don't really like he's not i don't really like him like wall is probably my favorite out of the spriggan i just i love his character and i love his design but um agile is like the first out he's got like the least interesting on stuff which sucks i just one more small agile thing because in his concept art he's got like a magic lamp and I was like, what well, it had an original theory I, I had going on of like, what if the all the Spriggan weren't even really human? Like, what if he was a genie or at least he had a genie? That would have been really cool to this power. I wish your machine would did that. Maybe he'll do it in the future to kind of like make him more powerful. But anyway, anyway, back to the actual chapter itself. I rambled on just because I, I, I remember that and I was like, it just went with that magic plant. That was cool. But you have all these characters who are not really powerful they're not really known for fighting they're unfortunately not really even known for being in the story there's they are people outside i'd say outside of max and warren if you know the names of the rest of them it's because you've read the series multiple times uh, I, I, there's not really a whole lot to really to like be like man i remember these guys from this part i mean you have better luck with someone like hibiki or you know any uh Ichiya, any of the trimen uh, any of those guys you'd be able to remember them because they actually have a part in the story these other dudes don't really i mean max has the short fight with uh with natsu uh Ritas has like a cool part in phantom lord and uh Kinana has like a part in the anime but that's that's about it but uh even even carla's like oh wow that awesome you dudes that great I'm, I'm, uh, not carla fucking uh happy drops <laughs> and he's just like uh yeah can it we're, we're trying to save Carla from not dying to this crazy extension of a giant dragon god. Uh, can you guys do something? And they're like, oh, um, we're, st we're still not even, like, S-class level. I mean, we, we gotta get to that. And then there's that wizard saint level. And then after that, there's that spriggan level. Um, we gotta get about up to that one way over there with all those crazy super powerful, like, can mess with countries at whim uh, wizards. Um, we're over here still trying to deal with stuff from, like, back in Sirius Island. We're getting there. We're getting there. We'll, we'll catch up to you guys. But uh, for real, it's just like, man, you guys are in a bad spot here. And then again, more just attacks from uh, from Doom. I really like that. He uses Spore Stream, so he's got pretty much a big frontal cone attack of his spores. I just think that's really neat. I really like just seeing his attack displayed. And especially when you can do it in such a simplistic way. Like his abilities, it's, it's all the same. But his, uh, his attacks are all different ways he's just implemented. He's got big AoE all around him, just slow fall. He's got, uh, you know, he, he's got a big, fr uh, fast frontal cone. But thanks to um, Max, Max is able to do a little bit, but against his normal, like, kind of just free, like, oh, it's just slow scattering all everywhere. He can't deal with, like, this much heavier attack where it's got, like, some power behind it. They're getting damaged. And Wendy uses the rest of her magic to enchant them. You can tell she's like, I, I, I want to believe in them, but I know how strong they are. Oh, God, I, I'm going to take the risk. Enchants all of them, buffs all these dudes up, and they are actually able to contend with uh, with Doom here. And there, there's a couple things I, I, I definitely want to go over. One is the idea behind it, because keep in mind, Doom, Doom definitely was just, I'd say here, somewhere within Spriggan level, but he, what I would compare him closer to Nineheart, where he's more of a classic kind of caster he's a really hacks broken ability caster but he's not used to taking a lot of damage it's kind of like uh with wolfen wolfen has a mass amount of him there's a ton of him but if you find out like a, a way that he becomes a danger to uh the aldron you've pretty much defeated him without actually having to fight him like wolfen can't fight natsu anymore he's completely unable to because if he'll just turn into Zareph. Like, he's, you, you got to figure out that kind of way around him. And I actually kind of like that because they're, it makes all of the god seeds a different way that they're defeated. If, if they're all kind of beaten in, in, in its own kind of way, you just have to figure out what to get past. There's a gimmick to each of them. I think that's really cool. Uh, it has more of like a boss, kind of like a raid boss kind of mechanic feel to it, which is one of the things I really like about Alderaan as they're riding this big dragon. It feels like you're in like a, a big MMORPG uh, boss battle. 
like a raid boss and you're you're fighting all the bosses just to get up to the main one i just think that's really neat and having different mechanics like that i, I think makes it a lot more of a unique experience rather than they're just big strong opponents that they have to fight and beat they're still powerful like they're definitely like they got some uh you know skill behind them and stuff but uh they're they're not undefeatable and especially like in this scenario where you have wendy who is very powerful wendy is still really strong even after getting beaten up by uh by uh fucking god how am i remembering his name against uh oh my how am i remembering his nebel i'm like I, he's like i really liked him how am i uh forgetting his name i was gonna say neville but i was like that's not right i mean unless that is how it's actually supposed to be. anyway uh with him that she still really strong. I mean, she still could mess like with Spriggan and stuff and take hits from like Agnologi, even if he's not at full power, still really impressive. Um, she's still strong. So like her enchants being able to put these guys up to a pretty sizable amount is believable, uh, especially like in a spot if we know like the style of Doom that he's more of a caster and he's not like a takes heavy damage kind of guy, kind of like Nineheart. Because Nineheart was a Spriggan, but he was a traditional caster where he is not durable because he that's not the way that his uh, his whole ability set is designed. But yeah, Wendy enchants them. They're able to get some tax in. And I really like this on for, for multiple reasons. Because like I said, it's, it's furthermore into the idea that the guild fights together. It's not one character. Uh, they're, even if these guys are weaker, you have a character who's, uh, they're able to, uh, buff the other ones. They're able to work as a team, as a unit in order to get the job done, which like, always fits into the, the whole fairy tale kind of more family motto, family style. Uh, it, and it doesn't just kind of look at these guys like, oh, these guys are weak. Get them out of the way. They're useless. They won't do anything. No, it, it's, we will figure out a way for you guys to be, uh, valuable in this. And I, I like that a lot. I, I, I had like a little mixed feelings at the start, but I thought about it as the day went on and then uh, the translations gave a lot more effort to that to where I can kind of understand it a lot more instead of just looking at it like, I don't know what they're saying. So some of the context and some of the kind of like larger pictures of like how this chapter relates to the series and it is, like I said, I think it really makes more fun. Uh, more praise towards the, the the whole thieves of how the guild uh, is set and, and kind of the whole story structure all around for how fairy tale is but yeah and, but on top of that we get to see some of these guys magics which is really cool because some of them we've known what it is from their guild cards but i don't think we've ever really seen it in action and i think the degree like um uh like nab uh, back in back in the um the fighting festival you see like a little bit of his magic on him but here he's got like in a buff form, he's got the f this full bear, and you're seeing how it is. I like the and they all they're like a different naming structure too, and stuff that you know about him. Like he's uh you know uh, Seath Magic Beast Spirit Bear the Knuckle, and I just like that he's got his own kind of style of calling his attacks. I think that's pretty cool, and he's able to just kind of use the shockwave as from his punch to spread the spores around. You have uh, Vigitor use his uh, dance magic to kind of just like control Doom's body, make it so it's harder for him to uh, to get any of his attacks and spells back out, or uh, attacks and abilities. He's not using magic, at least it's not said he's using. And and two on the as well on the fact when you know like traits about the character, because I know Lackey like her thing is that she um, says weird like she has a lot of weird like sayings that she made up herself. And like uh she just talks really odd so like as a maker maid she like she has weird names for all attacks like in this one though it's kind of normal but i feel like it has some like strange meaning behind it like she's using god punch but i'm wondering if it's named not it's named like that not it's just like oh it's a godly punch it's really powerful i i feel like she named it like that because it's a punch that is hitting a god seed which makes sense with uh, her character if she's giving it some weird kind of like situational name. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, these guys coming in. You got uh, you got Kinana who's using her poison magic, which again relates to the fact that uh, you know with Cobra. I, I mean, do we really have to go into much detail there of why she's probably got magic that he can straight eat and get powered up from? Which I like a lot. I like that they have like a synergy magic. It's really nice. He, she is his know his girl and his support good stuff there but she also attack i mean like her support that she can like hey if you you know if you need extra stamina and magic you can eat this but you gotta keep in mind it's also poison mist so it's 
It's also like killing people potentially, or at least taking them out. You got Redis. He's got his magic painting swords, which is badass. I, I always really liked the idea behind that power as like a drawing ability. And it's kind of weird as like the idea of like you're drawing somebody who's drawing something to attack somebody. I don't know. I've always really liked that anytime I see that in any series. Uh, you know, you got people like Psy and Rill, just, just good folks. Um, but these guys are, you know, they're coming in. They're just kind of bugging. Uh, they're just kind of bugging uh, Doom right now. He goes in for another attack. He's got uh, Spore Big Bang. So first one is just like a big AoE slow fall, and then he's got a big frontal cone. Now he's coming up with like a big explosion one. But uh, <laughs> then you have Warren. Warren being like as, as like his fighting style is so weird when you think of it because he's had to have like some way of being able to fight because I think it was in the fighting festival if you go back and look when it's just showing his match results that he won I think it was him I had to go and look I think it was him versus Nab and I think he beat Nab so oh my God, I, I think it was Nab I don't think it was Max or anybody like incredible um, but he went and beat uh, he went and beat him and I was always like He's got to have some way of fighting where he's just reading minds and what he's doing. And it's, it's kind of like this. He's got like a almost, he's got like a weird assault style where he's, uh, where he's like reading your thoughts. So he knows what you're doing, going and doing, you know, getting around that while also thinking very like weird sounds in order to like mess with your head so he can get in attacks. A very interesting way. It's silly yet effective. I like that. I actually really like that about him because he's not even like, buffing himself with like other magics to make it so like uh kind of like if he had like the drunk hanging chop kind of or i guess it would just be the hanging uh was it hanging chop fist and then the drunk hanging chop fist like bacchus if he had something like that where it's like oh an opening and then he does a martial arts move or he enhances a strike with magic it just looks like he's just straight tackling him and stuff and i'm just like i get why you're useful in support but don't fight i'm glad you know how i'm glad you have an idea of how but don't do it and and they're just kind of like talking about like even if they're uh small together but like they you know either like yeah but we are still fairy tale mages wizards that aren't going to be uh you know the that aren't just you know alone we are you know a unit we're together and they're going to combine their strength in order to beat him and if they do that you know they can beat any any enemy i don't think that's it. i mean that's true if you think like the whole guild combined not just these guys are like the idea of like yeah we're automatically going to be able to do that because when you think about it, it's very situational in, in turns, or in, in certain cases when you have separate fights. If you put the whole guild all together on the battlefield, sure, you know, they could pull off some crazy achievements. But if you just kind of, like, group them out, like, I mean, no, you guys are doing stuff, but it's thanks to Wendy buffing you, which is also crazy because uh, think about being in their world and being a wizard and you're... You're like an already you're already above average you're like above average but you have characters in your guild that are so powerful like beyond you so crazy strong in comparison to you and then you get buffed by one of them to the point where you actually can fight like a big character you would probably feel amazing you'd feel literally like the most powerful you probably will ever be in your whole life and you are always just like hang out with Wendy but can, can you buff me again I want to I want to be that strong please I need to be that crazy again I don't know, it's just weird to think about, you know, if you, when you have, like, a growing power level, because in their world, you'd feel your magic, but at, at this case, you'd be, like, literally the strongest and, and that you'd ever experienced by a lot, which is just really neat, but uh, after that point, he's just getting mad, he's just, like, starting to spread more spores out, and this, I really like, this was a, a panel that I was kind of indifferent about, this page, uh, when I just looked at it and read what some people were saying, but now we have the translation is you have um you have max who like i said similar magics and they were in the same arc in the alvarez arc and i was always like why didn't they ever why didn't they ever, there was no interaction between them even if it was literally like max rushes into battle uses the sand attack agile just kind of like notes it and it's like wow we have the same magic and yours is pathetic holy shit dude um it's not even if like that where it was literally just to humiliate him like, there was no interaction of them at all. Like, you think that, that he, there would have been something, or, like, Max helping Urza in the fight where he uses his sand, like, the best his ability is literally just making small openings for Urza. Something like that, I could see, like, uh, also, but it's, like, nothing. And it was always weird to me that he didn't do that. But now, uh, like, you have roads intersecting. You have characters from different parts in the story 
now playing a role in um, an older character in the story uh, and the way that they kind of just they intersect I think is really badass I love that um, about like long going series and it's something I absolutely enjoy like to my core it's like when you when you have a character like this when you when you have a character like Max who like back in the the start of the series like you, he's just, he kind of looks a little silly you see he's got sand magic by default like without even like seeing like crazy ideas this is the idea of sand magic oh that's pretty cool as well as he can probably think of other characters that manipulate sand you're like man that's just a cool power in general that guy's got a pretty cool power and then you never really see him do anything you get the time skip he went from a goofy guy to kind of like this a little bit like he's got like this kind of cool stoner look to him like you know, maybe like a dude that just kind of like plays like an old guitar and uh, kind of like a little hipsterish um but a cool uh, kind of a cool guy somebody that's like yeah, that guy's probably nice stock he's probably like an all right guy and that um and then you see him he's actually pretty strong he's able to give natsu a bit of a fight like right after serious island before they got into the grand magic games and you know, and you saw Max, and it was like the first time Natsu pulled out Lightning Flame Dragon mode. Man, remember that was pretty awesome. That just was it's such a, a, a staple moment because I thought it was temporary. Then Natsu busts it out, and then like, oh, sweet, this is going to be a reoccurring thing. Um, and then it, uh, even though Max, like, after that point, like, that's the fight that I most remember him of, uh, remember him of and he's just like, I quit. I, I surrender. I was just always like, at least remembered him. And then he we we got to the we got to the freaking Alvarez arc and nothing about him. And now like uh, it seems that he went to uh, Alakatasia at some point. He went and visited, and we know that Agil is now the emperor of the uh, of the empire of Alvarez. And he is uh, you know him being king. You have a member of Fairy Tale, the guys that you just went to war with that defeated you, uh, come to visit. So this means that he is friends with the king, and I say friends, not just like he met him, is because when, uh, if he learned a spell from Agil, that means that he's training under him. He's, that Max is training under this character that, like, was the first to invade, uh, to take Mavis and to get Fairy Heart for Zareth. This guy that was, like, introduced very oddly because i like this first kind of style where he was like this very complimentary bad guy really like all right cool and then he became more of like a power complex god complex guy when he was when he was just testing people out he's chilling though he's actually in war he's just like i will murder everybody i am a i am a god he's just kind of becomes like a crazy power like deluded dude but like that dude now like in the idea of it is you had this you had this dude come over you have the same magic he's from a guild that beat you in a war and you're training him and which means if he trained him then he would be saying like referring to agile some form of like teacherly role like uh you know because if, if he's teaching him then it would be like oh yeah he's he's way more powerful and he's teaching you so it must be you know it's like student and teacher but he's just calling him agile and no like uh you know like master agile or anything yeah this means that they have to be like at least on a good enough level that he's just calling him his first name and nothing else that, that's interesting to me that that you know they potentially have like a friendship going on I, I think that's really cool um and maybe maybe like afterwards like you, you have to like keep that in mind like you you're this really powerful dude these guys beat you in a war your entire empire against this guild uh where these guys just dominated well they didn't dominate it was like kind of like push back and then in the end just like a hard domination like right at the end with those fights with like august and irene and Zareph. But um, then you're, you're beating him. You're probably a little humbled. You're like, man, uh, I'm sorry about that, dude. And probably like we're, we're pretty chill meeting him. And when I first like uh, heard like people were saying like, oh, he uh, he's saying that that uh, that he's more powerful than Agil now. And I was kind of like, I don't know about how comfortable I am with the idea of characters just being at Spriggan level so easily. Like, uh. Like, if, they, if it was just like, oh, I trained really hard in the last year, and, all, and then he was here, I was like, ah, uh, okay. But I guess if he trained straight with him, I had the, I, well, if the paths intersected, then I'd say that's okay. But, uh, and what I mean by that, I'll say in a second. Um, if he just was this strong, I'd be like, eh, I don't know if I feel comfortable I feel with people just jumping up to this level so quickly uh, out of nowhere. It would feel kind of strange just kind of make them that strong. That wouldn't, I don't think it would make sense. 
But uh, then it was like, okay, well, maybe Wendy buffed him up that way. And actually, that'll be really impressive if Wendy can buff people up to be above Spriggan level um, like this. But that's not the case. It was that, she, uh, that Max learned from Agil, like he trained under him. And I was saying, like, if they intersected, like, if the two ideas, like, if he went and trained with Agil for, like, a straight year, and he's like, I'm as powerful as him, I'd be like, I guess, yeah, if you guys just, if he beat you and you never gave up and just kept, you guys just trained literally to the fucking limit and broke it every day, then if eventually your levels met, like, you just had, like, this synergy going on between you two, I'd be like, okay, yeah, that's, that's fine. I, I can believe that if Max had, like, some way to, to kind of, like, explain, like, some crazy training regimen. Sure. But it's more of, like, that he trained under Happy. He's like, what the hell? You trained under him? And, and it's crazy when you think about it, both in the idea of you reading it, because it's it's a big bad guy from a previous arc, and now he, uh, you know, a member the, that's been in the series since the start is trained under him. And that's just really cool. And then in the world, we also keep having in mind, that any of these characters, when they think about Algeo, he, he's this really, still really powerful dude who's also the emperor of an entire nation. That's really impressive. It would probably just be like, holy shit, man, you know some important people. But yeah, he's, uh, but Max is saying he's, uh, that even with when he's enchantment, it's nothing compared to the actual uh, thing. Because I was just expecting it to be like sand sword, sand saber, but it was actually uh, Rommel Saf, or I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But, I mean, it literally means, like, sand sword, but it's, uh, I think, Arabic, which is in the fighting style that Agil uses. So he is using a technique, and, and that's um that's the one I think that he he used it against Urza. Uh, I think it was right after he used Sand World. But um, just him having this is really cool. I really, really like this chapter now that I actually, like, thought about it and just kind of, like, took it in and really thought about, like, all the connecting points that this literally, like, kind of has done since this uh you know in this whole last year between other characters which is just really cool because when you have like the main cast you have to keep in mind while they're doing stuff all these other smaller characters are out doing stuff as well they're they're all on their own journeys they're all doing like uh their own ideas and their own kind of like uh, things to move forward and grow and continue their life and journey and, and want to be more powerful and, and just do stuff uh, and clearly max wanted to if max literally, like literally went to another continent and trained under Agil, that's just, I think that's really cool. I think that's a really cool, like, addition to the story because it, it's able to give a spotlight to a, a character who's been in there since the start and never really got, like, a, a really a big spotlight and how he's kind of, he, he's connecting uh, arcs together like this and, and, and doing it within the span of, like, oh, yeah, that, this is what I've been doing in my last year. But I, I just, I really, really like that, 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 that uh, Hiramashima has done this. I, I, I love this chapter that I think about it. Like, I, it's, we've had a lot of really exciting chapters lately, but this one, I think, just has a, a very, very hard-hitting sense of, like, the themes of fairy tale, And I, I love that a lot. But uh, they ended up defeating Doom. And like I said, uh, all of the, first off, like, um, in the idea of when you have, like, the, the god seeds, as powerful as they are, they're all like Spriggan level. So the fact that, uh, the fact that Alderaan literally has five, he like, he's as powerful as Acnologia and he's got five Spriggan level people just roaming his back that one of them will just regrow continuously unless you like figure out a specific kind of like way to beat around his power. Then like, that's still really impressive, but these guys, a, a buff from Wendy onto these guys, while the main one, clearly Max, Max did the most, clearly. Like, he's the one that, that busted up in the first place uh, against the first attack, and he's the one that delivered, like, the big attack on uh, on Doom. Uh, especially the, the main one that did the most damage had already been training under a Spriggan, like, for the last, like, year or so. And then a big buff from Wendy. That just makes, honestly, perfect sense to me. I completely believe it, like, uh, right now, because it, like, all you have to do is be like, okay, we, we don't know exactly where each of the god seeds are, but they have shown, like, Spriggan level feats, so they must be around Spriggan level, so this, this display, I think, was actually really well done, not, not gonna lie, when I actually thought about it, and how all these things kind of, like, work together, I think this is really good, so all of them, kind of, uh, you know, they defeat Doom, take him out, Carlin's saved, 
and uh, you just have a really cool moment like with a lot of old characters and I like that I've, I've really loved one thing about hundred years quest in general is using older things like older things in the story giving them updates and callbacks I think that's really fun because at this point it it's less of like it, it's like a feeling that you give to the people that are longtime readers because there's always like that moving of the story where it's like oh cool yeah we want to we want to get you excited for the next story which is excited for the next story but they want to like put stuff in there to where there's like callbacks to like things that people that have really read the story a lot and can and see something and say like oh shit this is a reference to the you know when this happened back here this is a reference to this back here or characters who people can like that know the story and know the series and you know pay attention to stuff and read multiple times and watch multiple times no they're like the only reason that know these guys names and their stories and they're actually able to like uh logically do something really impressive in the modern story like the current story i think that's really uh really cool i i actually really like this chapter now that i thought about it like when i woke up i i i, I read the chapter read through it and then i would kind of was like ah i don't know how to really feel about this like I, I was a little indifferent like i was like okay man it's it's all right i was like kind of like trying to rationalize like how could they do this like what like what would how does this make sense like what how does this work okay wendy did something i was just trying to like figure out like i uh, i don't really know otherwise how to feel about it, it was not a bad it's not a good and then i i really thought about it and i was like i really like this now and when i really thought about all the different things that this kind of pieces together i i had a lot of fun reading this i'm gonna read it probably a couple more times today just because I think this is such a raw, like, not, like, if, I don't really know how to describe uh, what I was going to say. I was going to, like, say if it was, like, a, uh, like, one of those gotcha ranks. It'd be, like, some super rare card, but that doesn't really make sense. I, I, I thought it was a really terrible uh, way to describe it, but whatever. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, really good chapter. I, I loved it a lot, and anybody who got to the end of this uh, you can understand my rambling just because you probably when you really think about like what this chapter kind of does for the story then you've probably been wanting to hear like my raw reaction because I've absolutely am gonna be uh, stoked for the next one if they're gonna keep doing this and doom going down on one chapter because I want to say this doom going down on one chapter I'm I'm all right with um, I expect Metro to be like two. I, I, I don't think big things on Metro because uh, Doom was the silly one. Like, he was clearly the silly one. Metro already seems like he himself, like, he probably isn't durable. You have to get around his golems. And uh, Gears, I have I have expectations for Gears because he's 1v1 Jalal. And there should be no there, there should be no excuse for him not to have, like, a good display to be powerful. And then we have no doubts that the God Seed Alderaan is clearly very powerful. But anyway, other than that, though, comment below. Uh, tell me your thoughts are about this chapter. Tell me what your thoughts are about uh, how you, you know, you handled all this and how well you kind of like took away from this chapter. And uh, I really appreciate you thumbs up the video, put friend the like button, subscribe button, and check out my other videos. Other than that, I appreciate everybody's already subscribed, and I thank you all for listening. Bye.